Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPTE podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thank you so much for joining me as we go through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. So as you know, as we go through this podcast, we go through the FSBPT's most current published content outline. Today, we've got a practice question related to the cardiovascular and pulmonary system. On test day, you can expect somewhere between 22 and 27 questions related to cardiovascular and pulmonary systems. Now, of note, this is part of the big three systems as you go through cardio, musculo, and neuro. This represents approximately 75% of the test and is certainly something to study proportionately. I tell that to students all the time. Make sure you are studying proportionately so that you are putting adequate time into the systems that are most likely to show up on test day. So as we get started, just a quick reminder that you can check out ptfinalexam.com for all of the content, courses, and material you need to give you the tools you need to dominate on test day. So we've got everything from our full VIP program. This is one where we go through each system on the exam, really take you step-by-step step through all of the content. We do tons of practice questions together, really prepare you very, very well for test day. That, that And our products range all the way down to our crash courses. We've got an independent study course that we've just updated for 2024 as well. Loads and loads of content. I think you'll enjoy it. Plus, if you have a university cohort or if you are a class president or somehow involved in your class, uh, you can also reach out to us. We do university programs where you get a very significant discount by getting the entire cohort together to prepare for the NPTE with PT final exam. So be sure to check that all out over at ptfinalexam.com. You can reach out to us directly over on that, on that contact tab and you can get in contact with us to find something that suits you best. And as we begin, just another note, if no one has said thank you to you today, let me be the first to say thank you. Thank you for what you do. I know that as you are preparing for this exam, it takes a lot of blood, sweat, and tears to get you through the exam. And so thank you for what you do. I know that as you do so, it's not only going to bless your life, but also the lives of your patients for years and years to come. So thank you for what you do. All right, so as per usual today, I'll talk about a, we've got a practice question for you. This is related to the cardiovascular and pulmonary systems. So as per the usual, I will read to you the question, give you a moment to respond, and then we'll talk about the answer together. All right, here we go. Which of the following educational advisories is most warranted for a patient taking warfarin, Coumadin, following a total knee arthroplasty? Which of the following educational advisories is most warranted for a patient taking warfarin, Coumadin, following a total knee arthroplasty? Option one, limit alcohol intake. Two, eliminate foods rich in protein from diet. Three, encourage diets rich in leafy green vegetables, such as spinach. Four, encourage herbal su supplements such as ginkgo biloba. So we've got number one, limit alcohol intake. Two, there's <clears throat> number one, limit alcohol intake. Two, eliminate foods rich in protein from diet. Three, encourage diets rich in leafy green vegetables such as spinach. And four, encourage herbal supplements such as ginkgo biloba. All right, so this one, this question is really all around the interactions that can occur with the with a patient taking warfarin or coumadin. So warfarin is the generic name. Coumadin is the, the trade name. So the correct answer here is that option one, limit alcohol intake. Now, uh, looking at various sources online, you'll see that, that there, there are some varying recommendations. But generally speaking, you don't have to totally eliminate alcohol. However, that being said, alcohol does have a, what is it? It has a tendency to potentiate warfarin and actually further exacerbate or increase its effectiveness. And so potentially a person who is is on warfarin or Coumadin and then also takes alcohol or uses alcohol, they'll they'll find that they get an increased bleeding effect or that it, uh, it thins the blood a little bit too much. So I guess backing up here for a moment, that warfarin or Coumadin, this is used as a blood thinner or an anticoagulant. Now, it doesn't really dissolve blood clots. It just stops the clotting cascade. And so, therefore, someone who's taking warfarin or Coumadin, this is being done to prevent or limit or reduce the blood clotting that's occurring, at, usually after a period of inactivity, someone who is at a very high risk of blood clots. So, uh, in this case, we're talking about a patient who has just had a total knee arthroplasty. And so a patient with a total knee arthroplasty, they fit in the category of, of being inactive, having a recent surgery, they're not moving around quite as much. And so one of the potential side effects or adverse reactions to a total knee arth arthroplasty from that major surgery, as well as the inactivity that follows, 
is that they could develop a deep vein thrombosis. And so therefore, as far as the counsel you'd give to a patient who is on Coumadin and Warfarin, uh, number one, certainly you want to limit alcohol intake. So try to reduce that or at least keep it at a very low steady state so that it doesn't increase their risk of bleeding. Uh, again, alcohol, especially in the presence of some type of liver disorder, so cirrhosis of the liver or, or liver cancer, that would even further exacerbate the, the risk of bleeding that's caused by warfarin or Coumadin. So these other incorrect answer options. So eliminating foods rich in protein, uh, this is kind of the outlier here. You want to make sure that a patient after, after some type of surgery or injury that they have adequate protein in their diet. And so, in fact, that's often one of the dietary considerations after a, a major surgery is to make sure they have adequate or sufficient protein. So you would not want to eliminate foods that are rich in proteins. We're talking meats, eggs, dairy, all those items that have significant amounts of protein in them. Uh, option three is incorrect because it says encourage diets rich in leafy green vegetables such as spinach. Well, spinach and kale and leafy green veggies, they tend to have vitamin K in them, which actually counteracts warfarin's effect. And so if you are trying to have the patient be anticoagulated or on an anticoagulant therapy, you'll find that this effect is negated by taking vitamin K or having a uh, like for instance, if they went on a, a spinach cleanse or something where they dramatically increased their diet in leafy green vegetables, so spinach and kale being the primary ones there, that that would counteract warfarin's anticoagulant effect. And finally, the last incorrect answer is to en encourage herbal supplements such as ginkgo biloba. And I have to admit that I, that I had to look up the pronunciation. I, I've always known ginkgo, but ginkgo biloba I believe is the correct pronunciation. Uh, I've always seen it written, but never had to say it before. So encouraging herbal supplements such as ginkgo biloba. Uh, patients should also avoid other herbal supplements such as uh, garlic, so we're talking like pill form garlic, uh, dong kwai, dan shen, and ginseng. These are all supplements that can counteract or interfere with warfarin's, with warfarin's effect on the coagulation cascade. So it's the clotting cascade that requires, what is it, it's about 12 steps that a patient develops a blood clot and it's it's how we develop blood clots it's just the natural natural presentation of blood clots and we like that we like to clot sufficiently especially in the case of like uh, really any type of injury or or insult to the cardiovascular system we need sufficient clotting but what happens if a patient is inactive post-surgical or has a propensity to clot or develop a deep vein thrombosis we have to treat that or, or or uh, I guess, what do you want to say? We want to eliminate or prevent the creation of any type of deep vein thrombosis, which obviously this can occur and turn into a pulmonary embolus, which is all bad news. And so uh, in this case, th this patient is taking, uh, taking Coumadin or, or Warfarin in order to reduce or cause anticoagulation related to their post, the, the total knee arthroplasty they just received. But of note, you'll also see the use of long-term Warfarin or Coumadin for cases such as atrial fibrillation or in the case of someone who has, has severe inactivity. So um, I think about a person after a spinal cord injury, a lot of times they'll be on long-term anticoagulants. Now, not mentioned in this question is how do you measure that anticoagulation? And the way they measure it is with the international normalized ratio, so the INR time. So INR is simply looking at how well the patient or how much time it takes the patient to clot compared to a reference population. So you've got your patient versus the referen po reference population. And so as a ratio in its name, it's the international normalized ratio. The ratio of that prothrombin time should be approximately one to one, meaning that your patient clots at about the same amount of time that it takes for the reference population to clot. Now, someone who's taking anticoagulant therapy, it's going to take longer for them to clot. The blood is a little bit thinner, so to speak. So you have thinner blood. And so therefore a patient who has a 2.0 INR, that indicates it takes twice as long to clot as the reference population. And 3.0 takes three times as long. And so therefore our target therapeutic range, and when I say our, I'm talking about the, the, the entire interdisciplinary team, the target INR, uh, what is it? The, the target therapeutic range on INR is 2.0 to 3.0 with the, with the sweet spot being 2.5. So if they are above 3.0 on their INR, that tells you that your blood is too thin. If they're below 2.0, then it's, it's very close to normal and it's not anticoagulated enough. The blood is not thin enough. Again, th that terminology is, is helpful for the patient to consider. 
as we talk about blood thinners, but it's not actually thinning the blood. It's just blocking the clotting cascade. And so just keep that in mind that that's, that's the entirety of what we're trying to do with Coumadin or Warfarin is to block the clotting cascade, which then would result, you would try to prevent or eliminate deep vein thrombosis or any type of other, other uh, thromboembolytic event. So uh, there you go. The correct answer again is to limit alcohol intake. You want to keep that alcohol alcohol intake low. You want to keep your leafy green vegetables at a at a at a baseline level. You're not going to really change or dramatically increase the amount of vegetables. Uh, they need adequate proteins, so you certainly want to add protein to their diet. And then avoid herbal supplements, especially ginkgo biloba, garlic, and ginseng. All these can interfere with warfarin's mechanism on the the clotting cascade. All right, so there you go. There's your practice question for today related to the cardiovascular and pulmonary system. So I know that a lot of you are listening to this either on the way to your clinical, you're out for a run, doing the dishes somewhere, whatever it is you're doing, uh, thank you for what you do. I know that as you're heading into clinic today that you've got a lot on your mind, you've been working and worrying a lot. Uh, I know that when I was in my third year of PT school, in my final clinicals, I remember feeling a lot of pressure to, we had to see a certain number of patients every day. We had to get our units in, all of our, our productive time. They, they really were treating us as if we were actual PTs, giving us the same standards that our, that our, our colleagues that were after the exam, that are our entry-level DPTs that they were encountering. And so I just want to recognize that, that you are pulling a heavy load right now. And then what's more, you're actually paying for that experience rather than getting paid. And so uh, take it for what, it, what it's worth. I know that, that the road you are treading right now is a little bit difficult at times, but just uh, as a friend of mine around here, she, she likes to say, keep a grin on your chin as you're going through these things. Just remember that uh, it's worth it. This is a good intersection of your skill and your interest. And so therefore, uh, this is going to yield you, like we talked about, it's going to bless your life and the lives of your patients for, for now and years to come. So hang in there. Uh, keep a grin on your chin. We'll crank fist pumps all around. I'll catch you all in the next episode. Be sure to check out all the other episodes we have. If you haven't yet, leave us a five-star review over on Google Play, Apple iTunes, Spotify, wherever it is you're listening to this podcast. Have a fabulous day, everyone. Catch you in the next one. Thanks.